Thank you so much for starting your week with us here on Spectrum News One. Hope you are having a great Monday. Let's go ahead and get straight into our top stories. New information this afternoon after a large fire at a lithium plant in Bessemer City that is located about a half hour away from Charlotte. Officials shared an update with us during a press conference just before noon. We just got finished watching a press conference from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department about a mass shooting that killed 10 people. Investigators say it happened in Monterey Park, California, that it's just outside of Los Angeles. And people that we will never forget, just a tremendous impact that they had right here in Raleigh. People across the world mm -hmm. are remembering these five victims who lost their lives. Thank you so much, Patrick. Such a great person, a life cut very short. And you know, something else that when you heard the mayor talking, so much emotion there. Yeah. Um, and then it's just so sad to hear he's leaving behind his two-year-old daughter and his family. We are continuing our coverage of the severe weather impacting our state. The weather rolled in across the central and eastern part of North Carolina and delivered strong winds and a lot of rain in many places. Welcome back to Spectrum News One. Hope you're having a great Saturday. It's time for weather on the ones with meteorologist Vernon Turner. Vernon, you will not get any complaints out of me today because <laughs> it feels so good outside. I spoke with Pastor Bill Atkins, a prominent pastor in Memphis, Tennessee. He says he's been in touch with the district attorney's office and he says the question that is still not getting answered is why did officers stop Tyree Nichols? Thank you so much for starting your week with us here on Spectrum News One. Hope you are having a great Monday. Let's go ahead and get straight into our top stories. New information this afternoon after a large fire at a lithium plant in Bessemer City that is located about a half hour away from Charlotte. Officials shared an update with us during a press conference just before noon. Special News One reporter Jordan Kudish, he joins us now with the latest on this investigation. Jordan, just from looking at the nature of that fire, so severe, glad that no one was inside. Back to you. Some massive flames. Glad everyone is okay. Thank you so much for keeping us updated, Jordan. A sad update that we've been following since this morning. Official FAA documents indicate the pilot of a plane that crashed into an Oak Island home has died. The incident report says one fatal injury to the sole flight crew member. We are told that plane was leaving the Cape Fear Regional Jet Port yesterday when it went down on Frying Pan Road. Authorities say three people inside the house were not hurt. Severe storms are possible in North Carolina today and tonight. The greatest risk will be from damaging wind gusts and hail, but there's also a low risk for a tornado. Meteorologist Gary Stevenson has some reminders for you that everyone needs to know about to stay safe in your home. Those are going to be warnings that he'll be issuing today. We'll have much more on today's severe weather threat coming up in the Weather on the Ones forecast. You can also find the latest on the Spectrum News app, including interactive radar and the latest weather alerts. Our nation's highest court is preparing to weigh in on some of the biggest cases of the term, including two cases right here in our state. Justices have 10 opinions left to release over the next week before their summer break begins. They are debating affirmative action in higher education and two cases, one involving Harvard and the other, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. The Supreme Court previously approved the use of affirmative action in decisions reaching back to 1978. Another case from our state, justices are watching, involves the state of North Carolina eliminating the power of state courts to strike down congressional districts drawn by legislatures on the grounds that they violate state constitutions. Another decision expected that could impact North Carolina is student loan forgiveness. And coming up next. Well, we are doing much better than, the, than we were last year. Lifeguard shortages continue to impact pools across the country, but one city in our state says they are working to improve those numbers. We'll show you how. Good afternoon, I'm Siobhan Riley. Here's your Spectrum News in 90. Raleigh police suspect the driver who crashed into a Duke Energy truck late last night was impaired. Officials say it happened on Six Forks Road near Sandy Forks Road. They tell us the Duke Energy truck pulled out to investigate a power outage when the driver of a sedan slammed into the back of it. The sedan driver later died at a hospital. The driver of the Duke Energy truck was not hurt. The investigation is ongoing.
And another crash in Fayetteville knocked a police officer into a sinkhole. Investigators say the officer was directing traffic when they were hit, but everyone involved is okay. Officials confirmed the sinkhole expanded because of the storm last night. A tree fell on a home in the Triangle. Take a look at this Chopper 11 video along Haley House Lane and Cary this afternoon. No word on whether anyone was hurt. And now here's your forecast. Good afternoon. A big decision handed down this morning by the U.S. Supreme Court involving the election law in our state and across the country. The case known as Moore v. Harper was decided in a 6-3 decision rejecting the so-called independent state legislature theory. Spectrum News senior political reporter Loretta Benini, she joins us with more on this. Loretta, break all of this down for us. Very interesting. We will continue to stay updated on that. Loretta, thank you so much. We are continuing our coverage of the severe weather impacting our state. The weather rolled in across the central and eastern part of North Carolina and delivered strong winds and a lot of rain in many places. The storm even caused power outages. This video that you see right here on your screen, it's from Greensboro, as crews are still working right now to clear down trees. In Raleigh, police suspect the driver who crashed into a Duke Energy truck last night was impaired. Investigators say the driver of the truck pulled over to investigate a power outage when the driver of a sedan slammed into the back of it. The driver of the sedan later died at a hospital. And moving farther south to Cumberland County, crews there are working to repair a sinkhole. Spectrum News 1 reporter David Ivey has been following this story all day out of Fayetteville. And David, quite a bit of damage that we've been seeing. What can you tell us? The lower level at Charlotte Preparatory School has been destroyed. A three alarm fire at the building has fire crews sorting through the debris. Spectrum News 1 reporter Alexis Bell, she talked with neighbors and a Charlotte fire captain today. Alexis, what's next? Coming up next, more news impacting you and your community this afternoon on Spectrum News 1. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Today is National HIV Testing Day. More than a million people in the United States are living with HIV, and about 13% of them don't even know it. That's according to HIV.gov. The CDC recommends everyone between the ages of 13 and 64 get tested for HIV at least once as part of a routine care. Spectrum News 1 reporter Anissa Lopez spoke with one community member about why she agrees. The time right now is 7.01 and we have a lot to get to this morning, so let's go ahead and get straight into our top stories. This is the last full week that abortion access after 20 weeks of pregnancy will be legal in North Carolina. Starting July 1st, that all will change. It was exactly one year ago today when the Dobbs decision overturned Roe v. Wade. The Supreme Court decision has sent power back to the states, allowing state legislatures to form their own laws without constitutional guarantees for abortion access. A Republican-controlled General Assembly overrode Governor Cooper's veto last month of our state's abortion restriction bill. I think it creates a lot of uncertainty. Meanwhile, supporters of limits on abortion and many state Republicans are pleased with the change. NC GOP spokesperson Jeff Moore sent a statement reading in part, North Carolina Republicans have passed reasonable restrictions on abortion that align with North Carolina values. Vice President Kamala Harris will be in Charlotte today to talk about the overturning of Roe v. Wade. She plans to speak at a Planned Parenthood event about the impacts the Dobbs decision had on our nation. Even a year later, many of the aftershocks of that ruling can still be felt. Our Washington reporter Rena Diamante takes a closer look. Push to protect access to abortion medication and contraceptives is also happening at the national level. President Joe Biden issued an executive order yesterday aimed at ensuring access to contraception in the U.S. It focuses on improving access through private and federal health care programs and supporting family planning services and supplies. During an event Friday, the president promised to fight back against a national abortion ban. I will veto it. Speaking of vetoes, two bills are headed back to our General Assembly after Governor Roy Cooper vetoed them yesterday. 
He vetoed the annual farm measure bill and another bill called Address ESG Factors. The annual farm bill covers many topics but was vetoed for one provision that would leave wetlands open for development. Wetlands are important for absorbing flood waters and pollution. In his veto message, Cooper said about half of the state's wetlands would be unprotected under the new bill. A warning from experts today after a fire killed four people in New York City this week. After the break, why they say lithium-ion batteries may be more harmful than you think.